There is something special about building your dream guitar. It takes time, it takes intentionality, and it takes deliberate action. It requires you to slow down and to think through the implication of every single choice. How does the pick guard match the body? Are the tuning pegs aligned? What pickups best suit this guitar? All of those decisions are yours to make, and the process is super exciting, but it's stressful and so rewarding. I've spent the last three years thinking through, planning, designing, and now finally building this guitar. And today I am so excited to show you everything that went into this project. So let's get started. Over three years ago was when I first started to plan and design what was going to be my dream guitar build. I started by using a spreadsheet that I found on Proformer Magazine that helped laid out everything that I needed for this guitar. That, in combination with Warmoth Virtual Builder, I was able to get a really good idea of everything that I wanted and more importantly, understand how much everything would cost. When I first started planning this guitar, I had a budget of around $2,000 and knew this guitar would be more expensive. So it was gonna be something that I needed to slowly piece together over time. Thankfully now, I'm in a position where Warmoth gave me the body for free and Lambertones provided the pickups, which helped significantly reduce the overall cost. However, I paid for everything else out of my pocket and everything else you see on the spreadsheet is the actual cost that I pay. This is my third Warmoth build and I've always really liked their bodies and their necks and they are my personal favorite. However, I've also used companies like Music Craft, USA Custom Guitars, Park Lane Guitars, and All Parts. Now I spent most of my time on this build during this planning phase because I really wanted to organize my thoughts and figure out what I truly wanted. In my opinion, if you spend more time planning, you're gonna be happier with the end result and you're gonna love what you build even more. If you've never done a build before and you hear nothing else from this entire video, listen to this. Slow down, take your time, and enjoy the process. Speaking of enjoying the process, this is probably the most fulfilling part of the entire journey. Building your own guitar. Building something that is entirely your own and exudes your personality and who you are at that specific moment in time. For me, it was building this gorgeous shell pink jazz master, but for you, it may be something entirely different. If you do want some inspiration, I spent a ton of time on Warmoth's unofficial blog, and then there's some groups on Facebook as well for parts casters and then offsets and jazz masters. When it came to the assembly of this guitar, I quickly started with the body, set up a work station and started with putting two coats of shielding paint inside of the cavity. There are a lot of mixed opinions on whether or not shielding actually makes a difference unless you really know what you're doing. But in this case, I did it anyway because it felt like the right thing to do. Once I had the body cavity painted, I started soldering the pickups and then the wiring harness. And I'm honestly not the best at soldering, but I've learned enough throughout my other builds and swapping out pickups on my guitar. And I use a Lambertone soldering iron, which I really love, but for the last three years, I also use just a cheap $16 kit from Amazon, which I'll show you right here. About a month after soldering the pit guard, I started drilling into the body and the neck. This has always been the step that's given me the most amount of anxiety. And if you're new to this process, I recommend using a center punch to find out where you're going to drill. Start with the drill and reverse, and then very slowly start drilling into the body as to not chip the paint. One area where I did screw up was installing the strap button on the upper bout. As you can see, I angled the strap button instead of mounting it straight on, and this really only affects it if I mount a strap to the guitar. And for me, I'm okay with this, and I lean into the fact that it's not perfect. It's one of those things that will only ever be noticed if I point it out to somebody else. Finally, I finished up with the neck by aligning the tuners and the string tree. For the tuning peg, I just took my sweet time and used a level to make sure that each of the next tuning pegs was in line with the last and it turned out great. For aligning the string tree, I mounted the neck to the body and installed the low and the high E string on the guitar and then just made sure the neck was as straight as possible and then just kind of visually gauged where the string tree would go and placed it there. Once I had everything finished, I mounted the neck to the body and frankly, I was a little disappointed at first mostly because the neck didn't quite feel like it fit the body of the guitar. And this was partially because I thought that the neck 
finish was a little too white and a little too clean to fit the overall aesthetic of the guitar. I went with warmest clear satin nitro finish and again it just felt too pure for this guitar. So I ended up taking the neck to a local luthier and I had him set up the guitar and then also level the frets as well as add a clear gloss finish to the neck. This honestly made a world of difference and even though it was 300 bucks I was really pleased with the end result and I personally think that it took the guitar from being okay and just a really cool guitar to something that I love and I'm really proud of. Honestly, most of this build's inspiration came just from me wanting a shell pink guitar. From there, I really wanted to create something that was unique and that I hadn't seen elsewhere. And this is where the chamber body came into play. I hadn't seen many jazz masters with an F hole, and in my opinion, it not only adds a really classy look, but it highlights the body shape and the pick guard as well. Originally, I also wanted binding around the body. However, because of warmest wait times, I decided not to go with this. However, I did decide to go with binding on the neck, and in my opinion, this really helps bring the entire guitar together. The white dots match the white hardware, and the parchment binding matches the parchment pick guard. Similarly, I wanted something that played like my previous Sir JM. So I went with a more modern neck feel and playability with a C-shaped neck, stainless steel 6105 frets, modern nut spacing, a tusk nut, and then locking Grover tuners. For the body, I ordered an Emerson custom wiring harness and then decided to go with Lambertone Ristrettos for the pickups. I already have a Novo with Lindy Freeland P90s and I opted for the Ristrettos because I feel like I wanted something that was a little bit more clear and articulate. And these feel like P90s for people who don't like P90s. They're still able to gain up really nicely and push that edge of breakup but they also sound great, really clean as well. Lastly, one of the more expensive items on this build was the Mastery Trim system, and I was really glad I didn't skimp out on this. 400 for a bridge and tremolo system felt really expensive, but ultimately it helped create an experience that really feels premium, and because of that, this guitar has zero tuning instability issues. I can use this tremolo freely and not be concerned with the strings catching or popping. I'd also heard great things about Stay Trim, but with my experience in my Novo and already owning a mastery trim system, I opted for that. Lastly, I decided not to install a logo on this build, and even though I went back and forth on this, I decided that I felt like it was a bit cheesy to have a logo on a guitar that wasn't actually a brand name guitar. Now that this project is finally done, I absolutely love it. On previous builds, I've not felt this instant connection and bond with the instrument, but with this one, I do. I think it's because I spent a lot of time planning and preparing for what I truly wanted and organized my thoughts before I began actually building this guitar. And because of all that, I think the finished product looks absolutely amazing, it sounds fantastic, and I truly hope this inspires you and your future builds as well.